Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about the clinical significance of vitamin D. What is it? How do we get it? What does it affect? And how much should we take? Okay, before I get started, I'd like you to go ahead and share and like the page to your friends and family so they can understand what vitamin D can do for their health. Okay? So, the clinical significance of vitamin D, or vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. There are three others, vitamin E, K, and A, okay? Cold calciferol, which is a vitamin, which is also a pro-hormone. So when they talk about vitamin D, this is what we're talking about, right there. So vitamin D is taken in through sunlight, it impacts the skin, gets absorbed, gets converted, goes to the liver, gets converted, goes to the kidney, and then gets converted to an active form of vitamin D, right? So the vitamin D you get through sunlight, through skin exposure. You can also get it from diet, from oily or fatty fish, egg yolk, red meat, liver, and some plant-based uh, foods, right? However, most of it is coming from uh, these types of sources. Now, the vitamin D has receptors in many different tissues. Gastrointestinal tract, bone, breast tissue, prostate tissue, lymphocytes. So let me stop on lymphocytes. When we say lymphocytes, we're talking about white blood cells. And white blood cells can be broken down into different components. So white blood cell can be broken down into neutrophils, which fights bacterial infections. Lymphocytes fights viral infections. So let me stop right there. Lymphocytes fights viral infections and vitamin D can impact lymphocytes. So there are a lot of viruses going on, right? Things like influenza, colds, COVID. COVID impacts the lungs in a lot of patients. So if we improve the function of the lymphocytes by taking vitamin D, you could lessen the symptoms or prevent uh, impact to the lungs when you get things like influenza and COVID. So it's very important to improve lymphocyte function and vitamin D is an important factor for that. Now protection against, okay, what that means is you need vitamin D to prevent things like, or help prevent things like uh, diabetes mellitus or DM, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, depression, cancer, autoimmune disease, right? It has a very global effect. So taking one nutrient could be quite beneficial to the overall health of the individuals, right? Now, most vitamin, uh, fat soluble vitamins work synergistically. So there are uh, companies that will produce all of these in a combination, right? But we're talking about just vitamin D today. So when we look at it and look at how we can explain vitamin D, because it has such a global effect, right? So there are two forms right here, vitamin D2 and vitamin D3 ergocalciferol and colocalciferol. This is from plants and it's prescribed. So when you have come in and you have low vitamin D or you go to your primary care physician and you have low vitamin D, below let's say the number of 30, they will prescribe you 50,000 international units of vitamin D per week. And they'll put you on for maybe four weeks, six weeks, etc. And that's it. They increase the numbers and that's it. Vitamin D3 comes from sunlight, right? So it impacts the skin, I guess, and then it goes through the liver and through the kidneys to make it an active form. However, you can get vitamin D3 over the counter or through nutrition shops, etc. Right? Here's the kicker. This one is prescribed, D2 is prescribed, but D3 you can get over the counter. However, D3 of colocalciferol is actually 
more bioavailable and it's more u utilized within the body. So it's better to take actually vitamin D3 that you can buy from nutrition shops, right? Rather than take, T, uh, take uh, D2, uh, which is prescribed, right? So in terms of testing, how do we test a patient and determine if they're deficient in vitamin D? There are two tests. One's called 25-hydroxy vitamin D, which is the inactive form. The other one is 125-dihydroxy vitamin D, which is the active form, right? We typically check the 25-hydroxy vitamin D because it's the most abundant in the blood and it's also, uh, the half-life is a little bit longer. So um, check vitamin D, uh, D3 by using 25-hydroxy vitamin D, okay? Now, I said this is inactive and this is active. How do we convert it? Right? If we take vitamin D, how do we convert into the active form? It's primarily through the kidneys, right? The kidneys has a big function in that. But it also occurs in lymph nodes, which is part of your immune system, alveolar macrophages, which is the immune system of the lungs, and alveoli, right? So the conversion of inactive to active forms of vitamin D can occur in these tissues. But take note right here. Those are lung right, um, cells, right? If you have lung cells that are responsible for taking vitamin D, inactive forms to active forms, think about it. If you take vitamin D, your lungs are healthier. Therefore, it can fight off infections into the lung. Right? Let me say that again. If you take vitamin D, you can impact the immune system of the lungs and the oxygenation and carbon dioxide uh, removal. So it's very important for things like COVID, right, or influenza or viruses, right, or pneumonia. It's very important. Now, what can negatively impact vitamin D or negatively impact the absorption of vitamin D? GI dysfunction, right? Gastrointestinal dysfunction. Age. As we age, our kidney function may not be as good. Our lung function may not be as good. So it can impact the conversion. Skin type, right? Darker skin tends to absorb less of the uh, UVBs. So skin type. Where you live, location, right? If you live in Florida versus here in the Northeast, your uh, sun exposure is going to be different. And also the angle of the sun hitting you is going to be different. Therefore, your vitamin D levels can be impacted. Bile. If you have your gallbladder removed or, or you have liver dysfunction, right? And you don't have enough bile, it's going to impact the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. In this case, vitamin D. Insulin resistance, metabolic issues, autoimmune disease will suck up your vitamin D. And there's another um, a little talked about case of polymorphisms where you have vitamin D receptor issues, right? Because of genetic problems. So there's a polymorphism issue, right? So we look at this and we say, hmm, we know we need vitamin D to impact our overall health, right? what is the proper level, right? What is the uh, recommended dosages, et cetera. It's very important to understand this portion of it. So let me go ahead and erase this real quick here. So the Institute for Medicine recommends 600 to 800 units of vitamin D, right? And the Endocrine Society recommends 1,000 to 2,000 international units of vitamin D per day. Okay, this is per day, okay? And the lab ranges, when they check for blood, okay, you're checking 25-hydroxy vitamin D, and we like that level, uh, the labs will say you need between 30 and 100 nanograms per 
Okay, so this is the target range right in here in the labs. Now, if a patient comes in and their number is, let's say, 11, in order for us to get this number up above 30, right, if we took 600 IUs per day, it'll take forever, right? Or maybe not even move or budge if they have other conditions. If we took one to 2,000 connectional units, it will take a long time for you to get it within normal ranges. So here lies the problem. Our recommendations, right, through these medical societies are completely incorrect. It's wrong, right? In order for you to get the right levels or to the, get the target levels that we want, in our office, we like target levels of between 60 and 80, okay? In order for us for, to go from 11 up to, let's say, 60, this will never make it there, especially here in the Northeast, okay? So our recommendation in our, my office, after we test, so after have to stress this, after we test the patient and we know the numbers, right? And let's say that patient comes in with an 11 on their blood test. I will prescribe 10,000 international units per day for four to six weeks. And then, we have to recheck, right? So basically, if you do 10,000 units per day, that's 70,000 units per week, and you do it for at least four to six weeks, and recheck to see if these numbers will go up to the 60 to 80 that I would like to recommend. And it'll take time, but in four to six weeks is much better than taking forever. To get there or never getting there so once we get to that ideal number that we want we will recheck and then put patients on a maintenance dosage and the maintenance dosage might be 4,000 to 5,000 international units but again after they're on a maintenance dose for a while you need to recheck to make sure you're prescribing the right amount so the importance of all this is that not everyone is going to absorb vitamin D the same way, and not everyone's gonna utilize it the same way. So if you wanna be accurate with dosing, you need to be tested, right? But really these numbers will never move those numbers the way you want. And 10,000 units or even 20,000 units per day if you wanna get it up faster, and it can be done, but with proper testing. It's very important for you to do that, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side. Have an awesome day.